In this segment, we're going to take a look at the options under the View drop-down menu, and that's found here on the top toolbar. So when I click on the View drop-down menu, we see options like 3D preview, um, grid options, guidelines, crosshair, setting your light source, changing your fabric, and your backdrop properties. So I'll go ahead and take a look at those different options. Basically, I have 3D preview turned on right now, and if I click on this again, it'll turn it off and perhaps what I could do is just zoom in a little more closely and then um, when I turn it back on view preview 3d you can see here that it's got quite a, um, a realistic appearance to it it basically takes all your computer lines that were there and gives them some thickness and darkens them up so that you can see them and also under that view drop down menu you've got the option to set the light source and when I use this Basically, I'll just move it over here. Um, you have the ability to choose where the light source is going to be. And if I go ahead and try and change the light source by just clicking, you'll see the difference here in the design. So every time I click on a different place for the light source, it gives a different appearance to that. And so it's sort of your ability to customize, I guess, the, the way that your design looks in the 3D preview. You also have an intensity, I guess like a slider that you could dark, take this down and, and you can see it darkens up the design, um, bring it back up and it just brightens it again. So if you find some settings that you really like in your um, light source adjustment, you can save those as your default settings and that way all, you know, all of your designs will be displayed like that. You also have the ability to reset back to the factory defaults and if you want you can just simply say cancel and not make any changes at all so that's the light source and the 3d preview now also found under the view drop down menu we've got the toggle grid which basically will turn on my grid and then um, you'll notice that if I zoom in so if I zoom out we just simply see the, the main grid lines which are set at every 10 millimeters but if I zoom in closely you'll see that there's actually smaller grid lines and so I have a main grid line every 10 millimeters and I have a smaller grid line every one millimeter and under the view drop down menu we've got our grid options and so we can actually change that in other words if I wanted to I could um, so right now my my X and my Y units are set at one millimeters well if I change this to two millimeters I would end up with a grid that was had an X line every two millimeters but a Y line every one so I'll say okay and you can see here, if I get even closer, that I have my X grid is every two millimeters, but my Y grid is every one millimeter. And so that's how you can adjust that under the view drop down menu, grid options. If you wanted to, you could set this at five millimeters and set them both at five millimeters and you'll get a, a five millimeter square. So it's really up to you to decide, you know, what would work good for you in terms of a size of a grid. That would help you to you know understand the size of your embroidery as we zoom in and zoom out also under the view drop down menu we have the ability to talk about um, editing our guidelines now i currently don't have any guidelines in this design and so what i'm going to do is i'll just close this window for a minute and perhaps i'll even turn off my grid just so that we don't aren't confused by the two and i'm going to zoom out so let's just imagine you wanted to create more than one star and you wanted to align them um, to create a guideline what I need to do this is the ruler if I click on the ruler and drag down into the workspace I create a guideline and I can place this wherever I want so when I let go it sets that guideline and I can make as many guidelines as I'd like to make so maybe I'd like to make um, I could use this to set the size by the way once I set my guideline down I can still edit it by you'll notice as I mouse up to it it gets darker and then I can click on it and I can move that so here I've set my guidelines ones at 0 10 20 30 so I've made them 30 millimeters apart and I could use that therefore to size this embroidery to fit those two sides so um, basically I could just resize my embroidery until it fit within that guideline and then Maybe I want to do I don't know, copy and paste and put the new one and, and make sure that they all fit into that, um, into the same guidelines. Now, the other thing is 
I have that ability into the View drop-down menu to modify those guidelines. So now that I've created two guidelines, you can see here that I've got one that's set at a 30 and one that's set at 0 0.1, so it's almost exactly on 0. Um, you could do things like change the position. So if I didn't want it at 1, maybe I wanted it to be at, um, I don't know, minus 10. I'll say OK. So it moved it down to the minus, because it's below 0, 10. So now I have a 40 millimeter distance in between my two guidelines. And you can create guidelines on the opposite ruler as well. You can have as many guidelines as you want in your design. Um, and this is your ability to edit them under the View drop-down menu, Guidelines. So now you can see that I have four guidelines created, and I could change their size or their XY um, coordinates. Um, you can lock them so that they're no longer selectable or editable, so that they won't get moved on you. Um, you could delete them. So if I said, well, you know, I don't need this guideline, I can just delete that one. Or I could delete them all. And it will be rem remove all my guidelines, which is fine. I could also add a circular guideline. So instead of having um, a straight one, I can create basically a circle, and then that becomes my a guideline in the design. So depending on what you want to use a guideline for, you have the ability to add them. So it's under the View drop-down menu, and it's called Guidelines. And that's where you can modify them. If you want to create a rec like a straight one, you just click on your ruler and drag to bring it into your workspace. So that's how you can create your own guidelines. Also under the View drop-down menu is the option to turn on your crosshair. And basically what this does is it, it gives a big green crosshair which follows my mouse. And see, wherever I go, that crosshair goes. And this is a bit of a throwback to some of the earlier days of digitizing for me. I know when I learned to digitize and I used a digitizing tablet and I had a, a multi-button puck that I used to move around on my tablet, on my screen, I used to have a crosshair that would follow. So it was, instead of a mouse with an arrow pointing, I had a giant crosshair. And so I guess that's just a little bit of that. Um, it really makes it easier for you to see exactly where you are. I guess it's just um, another visual opportunity that you have to control. So that's, again, under the View drop-down menu. If you don't like the crosshair, you just click on it again, and it takes it away. So also under the View drop-down menu, you've got Change Fabric. And if I open that up, you can see in here that I could choose from you know, a list of different types of fabrics. And so if we choose burlap and say OK, it will basically put behind my design that particular type of fabric. And so you can have any kind of fabric that you want from you know quite a list of different types of fabrics that are available. And here, whenever there's a little plus, that means there's more. So Embroidery Ultralight gives me these fabric choices. This is Embroidery Smooth, gave me these. So if you choose denim, you can have denim. If you'd want to choose the fleece, then you can have fleece or flannel. And whatever you choose, that's what's going to go on your screen as your backdrop, as your, sorry, as your fabric setting. And so one more thing under the View drop-down menu, and that is the backdrop properties. And when we talk about the backdrop properties, basically, um, if you remember when we talked about the Sequence Manager, about how you got um, an image of your design, um, and that image can be controlled. You can have it, um, your, your embroidery could automatically snap to that. You can make it selectable or have it shown when you're in 3D Preview, because currently when I go to 3D Preview, that image um, goes away. You can have it be visible or not visible and have it use the interpolation which uh, I can't say I'm 100% familiar with that term, but the concept is you can control your image map, your, your background. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I turn the preview for 3D off, this is what we're talking about here because I had modified the size and dis the position of those stars, but the image map, that the, the, the icon of my original design, which came in when I created the design, it's still shown here in my um, remember, it's the one that comes at the very beginning of your um, sequence list. So what that says is if I go under View drop-down menu, Backdrop Properties, I can actually make that to be selectable. 
And when I say OK, now I can actually go in and select that um, image map and move it if I want to or resize it. So that's what the backdrop properties, I guess, is really what it's called. Your backdrop properties and that image in your backdrop properties, you have the ability to have some control over it and things like the brightness of it and um, you know the contrast or whatever. So that's a quick review of the options under the view drop down menu. Now I guess before I finish there are a couple of other things so you have your toolbars and this is basically a turn on off so right now um, if I wanted to I could turn off a toolbar so my standard toolbar is checked off. If I just click this again the standard toolbar has gone away and if I come to my view drop down menu and go to toolbars you can see that it's just simply unchecked and if I check it again click on it a second time it adds the toolbar back to my menu so that's how you can see what toolbars are turned on and off and same thing with the roll up menus um, remember I had my object properties roll up menu my sequence manager property um, roll up menu and my transform I looked at those three together in a previous segment um, but I haven't shown the image map segment um, roll up menu yet and if I wanted to I could turn that on and you can see that that's found here and basically the image map um, I'll, I'll create a separate segment for this and talk about the image map but that's how you would turn it on and off is under your view drop down menu so I'll come back and touch on the image map and yeah and then you have your status bars checked off and again that's down here at the bottom if I turn that off it simply goes away I no longer have a status bar at the bottom and if I go to view status bar turn it back on and it's at the bottom and it just gives you information about your design size um, number of stitches and that sort of thing so that's my segment on using the view drop-down menu